What is up, nerds? It is me, that random guy from the internet. Super pumped today, um, in part because we're flying Spitfires again, but two, I have my first student tomorrow, which I am both excited and nervous about. Uh, hopefully everyone's going to come back in one piece. Um, also today, flying some more Spitfires, as you can see, got our invasion stripes, which I learned about a little bit from reading the Chuck's Guide, which is pretty cool. Uh, they had a rudimentary IFF system. I don't know how exactly it worked, but they were afraid with the volume of aircraft that they were using during the invasion that it would be overwhelmed. So they painted these invasion stripes on the Allied planes to avoid friendly fire incidents. So this is pretty much only for the month of June, and you can see that livery over there is getting into September. So they still had them on the ground, I guess, for those come targets. Um, but they kind of phased them out. Uh, this is also a mission that I have made. It is a ship escort mission. They're just going to go up the coast, and we're going to have to fend off some BF-109s and probably a couple JU-88s. Also, if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments if you want to see like a tutorial video about the mission editor in DCS, because I think that's one of the coolest features about the game itself, is it makes it endlessly replayable. And you can make your own missions and stuff like that. Uh, so without chatting your ear off, and hopefully the taxiing goes a little bit better than the last time, let's go ahead and get this thing fired up, bring it all the way forward to make sure our prop condition, full fine, Wob wobble, wobble pump, get this guy's the fuel pressure light goes off on the bottom right there, it is off, make sure these guys are on, what's up Falsar, I have two, although I mean I guess we're in uh, June 1944, probably a little warm on the ground for those. We'll, we'll give it five pumps, see if we can get some flames to spit out of the exhaust here. Mags on, I'm sure we're quarter inch cracked. Well, we got some flames, but what I didn't do was turn on the actual fuel down here. Well, there we go. She sputtered to life. Uh, standard pressure 2992, which in millibars is 1013. So about right there. Trim the nose down pretty much to neutral. I think also if you have a heavy load, they say to have a nose down trim. Um, once the gear go up, it has like a pretty strong tendency to pitch up. Also something else I didn't talk about last time was the compass, which is not very intuitive down here. So we need to line up this north with the T as best we can. Even with track IR, I mean, it's kind of hard to get your head down there. This little thing should lock, but it doesn't. I don't think it's actually clickable. So then you take this lubber line, this straight line that comes out of the center hub there, and looks like it's pointing at about 7-9 degrees, so we're not really too far off. Somewhere there in the ballpark, unless the suction system is not working. <clears throat> also, no gauges for suction in the cockpit. I'm not really sure how that works. I'm going to go ahead and taxi the runway. Well, one second. Also, Something else that I learned from the Chuck's Guide, the point of convergence for the the guns, both the 303s and the 20 millimeters, was ranged for about 300 yards. So we can set that to 300, and the wingspan for the BF-109s is about 32 feet. So this way, if we're looking through the HUD, and it looks like they fill up that little center gap there, pretty much good to fire. Let's let's see if we can get this thing to the, the runway. So I did a little bit of testing in this mission earlier, and uh, the wingman is just awful. 
So hopefully I'm going to be able to survive. All I wanted him to do was cover me to keep some of these guys off. So I've never actually finished this mission. Um, I've just died unceremoniously because my wingman refuses to do the one simple thing that I asked him to. So it could be a short stream. We'll see. to warm up a little bit more here. Plus again, I mean, look at the, what the wingman is doing. He's taxiing down here. And he's going to take off from right to left. So, with the tailwind. Eagle Dynamics, fix your, your shit, man. Good looking plane though. Once he rolls, then we'll row. Roll. I'm guessing the engine's gonna be warm enough by then. Also, I don't think I mentioned this. The reason that I'm picking up students tomorrow is because my instructor got the call up to the big leagues. He's flying here, I think he's flying a Lear 31 today. Get his drug test, so I think he's gonna be getting his type rating here in a minute. So if you're out there listening, congratulations, dude. There he goes. Bye. All right, I'm just going to start sending it before he freaks out here. <clears throat> uh, let me close these guys, too. All right, see how smoothly I can do this. There's eight. That was kind of a hard thing to get used to was the turn coordinator, the slip skid indicator. Unlike most Western aircraft, or I guess modern <coughs> American aircraft, instead of having a bubble, you've got this line. So if I side slip to the right, you can see the, uh, the tail goes to the left and vice versa. And then your rate of turn, I guess, down there is in the bottom. We're gonna go give the ships a flyby and then we'll climb up and start circling. So if you want to see if I'm coordinated, that's your indicator down there. That arrow, that arrow, I want to keep that centered.
they know we're here, we're gonna start climbing up and get into an orbit. Just try to stay in the vicinity. Obviously, if anything is going to attack them, it's gonna come from the French side of the channel, which is gonna to be to our one, two, and three o'clock. Just keep an eye on that part of the sky. Keeping it coordinated here, look at me. That I was having with the wingman earlier when I was testing this was that if I ask him to cover me, he doesn't. He just goes in, guns blazing on the other guy. So if I commit to a target, I don't have anyone covering my back. And I got smacked a couple times doing that. So I don't know if there's like a workaround, like I can just keep telling him over and over again to cover me. did do a pretty good job modeling is torque and p-factors. You see once we get to the top I was at about 120 miles an hour and I'm actually having to give it right rudder and a left turn now which is pretty cool. Also, the way that the fuel works, you're gonna press this button to get a readout, but it only gives you the lower tank. There's two tanks, there's an upper and a lower. Oops, wrong button. So that'll read full until the top one is empty and it starts to feed off the bottom one. I'm gonna go turn the fuel pump on too. up to a normal, we were at 230 miles an hour. I was still holding in that right rudder from the, we were slow, <clears throat> so it had me uh, slipping in the other direction. Alright, let's see if I can tell him to cover me. F7. Cover me. So that was his 10 o'clock. Okay, there's somewhere here that shooting a bunch of flak popping up here. And I see him. Let's get some boost. One of them is hit already. This could be easy. I didn't tell you to do that. 
he's gonna swing it in front of me while I'm gonna uh, smack this guy. Did he bail out? He's still alive. Follow him just in case. speed or what? I'm gonna overshoot him. Bits and pieces falling off all over the place. Come on. Getting real slow. get flaps out here in a second. that it's it's finickiness or it's sensitivity is probably one of the things that makes it a good dogfighter. It's just hard to get the nose stable on a target, but um, other than that, I mean, I guess one of the other issues is it doesn't really carry a lot of ammo, and I feel like I use quite a bit there. Fortunately, I don't think that our wingman did. I mean, I killed that guy, and I'm pretty sure that the first one got smacked from uh, 
flak or triple A or something down there. So hopefully he's going to have enough ammo if he has to to mop up if I run out. to the southeast. So last time they were getting hit with flak before I even got close enough to shoot at them, so missed out on some of the fun. racetrack orbit on this side of the boat so that way we're going to be a little barrier in case they do pop up because they're going to be coming from this direction. If you go too close to the French coast there is some flak around Calais and Dunkirk which is I think Calais is near these cliffs and then Dunkirk is the biggest port down that direction. Might be that right there. Good-looking airplane. Makes me want the Mustang too, because I think this, this, and the Mustang, I think, I think are two of the the best-looking airplane, airplanes, airplane of all time. Also, pretty similar, at least aerodynamically, pretty similar design philosophy, except for the wings. The uh, this plan form is probably the best for maneuverability versus controllability but they're hard to make because all the wing spars are different lengths. The Mustang had much of the, I mean, the clipped wing version of this was similar to what I guess the Mustang ended up doing, but I don't think the clipped wing version of the Spitfire is very attractive. This is much more iconic.
have the best idea to be in a cloud here either, because they can see through it, but I can't. some altitude on this one too. We climbed up inadvertently and got up in these clouds. I think 5,000 is probably a good altitude. I can't tell because I got a dirty computer screen. It's on my wingman again. Wingman, cover me. Two, cover me. Two, cover me. So clean your computer screens, guys. Alright, there's two right there. I don't know if you guys can see them or not. It looks like they're turning towards us. They are, I can't tell. Looking, 
other one. There we go. Oh shit. Pull. Wingman, I need you.
see how good this looks. I was talking to Deutsch, he's English too. I mean, I was, I'm guessing, other than a lot of the structures that are around the port and stuff, a lot of the buildings that weren't destroyed in the war, a lot of the architecture still seems to be standing in England. Doesn't look too far off, other than more roads, different cars, and stuff like that. Get down there and see what the port looks like. I guess, from what I've heard, seldom is the weather this good, right? <laughs> Maybe should have added some rain and clouds to this mission. Tall people, Cessnas, much better than Pipers. Oh yeah, you got some, you got some time. And the 172s, I actually have to slide the seat forward and lock it into place, which is pretty, pretty nice. That's luxurious. Canada, are you going? I 
need to get up there too. That's another thing. After having lived in, in Korea for so long, I have tons of expat friends up there in particular. A lot in Windsor, some in British Columbia. It's cool having friends all over the world, but at the same time, I mean, at this point, it's kind of hard to get anywhere else now because of coronavirus. Silly. Calgary. As long as you don't go during the winter. You into hockey? Didn't know that was a popular thing in England. That's pretty cool. Do you play? Probably kind of like it is here. I mean, people, you guys don't have your own professional hockey team, do you? See, being a tall guy in ice hockey seems like it would be less than ideal or top heavy. My sister used to figure skate, and I remember trying to ice skate a few times. Did not, did not go very well. We got professional teams here, but I don't really know many people that. I mean, I've been to a game or two, I guess, but uh, not the most popular thing in the world. They are fun, though. I don't know if it's the same as it is in England, but I think one of the main attractions, at least for Americans here, is that you go and if they get in a fight, they're going to bro down on the ice. It's basically like a mix between UFC and hockey. idea ice hockey was even a thing in the UK. It's funny. Used to be a big fan of the NHL games too. Those are pretty fun. what it's like for us in Formula One. bad, I guess, but it kind of sucks that you have to pay that much for, what, 12 months and you're only watching it? What is the hockey season? I don't even know. I guess about six months, seven months. You guys have to pay for F1 too? I thought Channel 4, or was it Sky? I thought those were free. I don't remember if we talked about this before. I know Deutsch is, but I just generally assume that most English people were... Oh, got those bombers. Most English people were because of Lewis Hamilton. Oh, that's right. We, were, we did the uh, the F1 bets thing, but it kind of fizzled out after like the first couple races. I was like, this season's going to suck. That's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. I also chose Vettel, I think, as one of my team guys, and he just, man, that's, was it was a 2019, 2000, I can't remember what season that was, but he just did a terrible job.
I, I've got a handful of like 303 shells left here. We're not going to do much damage to these guys. They're probably going to get more hits on me than they are because these things are covered in guns. I'm just going to shoot and scoot and just try to annoy them. There's tons of flak down there. Once they get near the port of Dover, it's just going to be flak city and I don't want to be anywhere near it. Where is it, buddy? Let's go for the tail guy. Boom and zoom. Let's get some boost going. YOLO! The other one's already breaking off. What's he doing? Alright, flax already popping up. I'm actually gonna try to dive down and then come up on him because that tail gunner is no joke. end up getting, let me go for this guy, I may actually end up getting the F1 TV. For one, you get a free seven day trial, which is good enough for at least a weekend. But I think it's $79 for the year, but you get access to everything, all the live timing and stuff. You get apps on your phone and you can put it on your, like, what do you call that, Roku or something. Hit surprising. I'm totally out of ammo now. Wow. Bye. That guy's toast. Where did the friend go? Look at all that. Jeez. Why would he fly so low? Where's his friend? That's nuts. Not professionally, at least as far as I know. There's cricket in universities and stuff, but, uh, yeah. I, I don't know much about cricket, but it seems like the most boring sport in, in the extreme to me. No offense. Like, games can last nine hours where nobody does anything. Where did the other bomber go? Is he back out here? Oh, he's out here somewhere. See the flood. There he is. I know it's a big. It's like one of the most popular sports in the world. I just I don't get it. It's not just the UK either. I mean, it's huge. All right. That was pretty cool. I, I mean, we're not gonna be able to kill this guy, but he's gonna die if he does another pass here. That was awesome watching the first one just get blasted though. Right there at the yellow edge of the prop. He just passed left to right. Yeah, turn back in, buddy. Go for another one. Nicholas, what's up, man? Good to see you. What have you been up to? You start your flight training or what? Thinking of test cricket. Nicholas, you can back me up, Brian. I mean, cricket is the most boring game in the world. There's some record for the longest sports match or something, and it, and it was cricket. Alright, there it goes. This guy is about to get toasted. And he died. Why would you fly over the port? Look at all those tracers. Hey, you know, whatever you're into, that's cool. It's not my thing. I don't get it. Or give me the gist. Explain what well, what is the appeal of, of cricket to you? Move flying 
back over the port like that. Oh yeah, I mean, I guess that's probably a bad time to start. Another career? New career? What are you up to? ships down there had black and AAA, plus there was this play stuff all around the board. Those guys just got wasted. Alright, let's get back down here see if we can find that. Well, that's where the money is, man. Jeez. Investment banking. <laughs> I'm not a math guy, though. I am not good at math. I think I see the airport over there. Well, I mean, I guess, look, that's, that's the appeal of going to a baseball game in the States, too, I guess. Would you say that baseball is boring? Because I know that most foreigners think baseball is pretty boring. But I mean, there's like, you know, verbal reasoning and spatial reasoning. And I, I score well on verbal reasoning, but I'm just bad at math. And I actually found, I don't know if you guys know what the SAT is, but I found my SAT looking around or sweeping around and some stuff at home. And I was like 96 percentile in verbal, and then something like 60 percentile in math, which is, <laughs> that's just garbage. But I ended up going to school for English. Props will find. Start slowing down. And my sister went to school for engineering, and I went to school and studied English comparative literature. She actually ended up using her degree, though. I guess I did for a while, too, when I was teaching English in Rio, but that's not really the same thing as what I studied. We are a beam, 160 gear down. Start trimming for that nose. Oh no, whoa, whoa, don't ask me any spelling. S A T, capital S A T, it's lowercase s because it's plural. All right, I don't like to put the flaps down and turn. Wait till we get on base here. Young guy, though, aren't you? I mean, the world's your oyster. Even if it's not, even if you're not, you can do whatever you want, man. I'm talking to somebody about it the other day, it's never too late to start doing something new. Right, 
Here we go, guys. Can I do this without ground looping? Turn it final. Yeah, you guys probably call them something else. But most, basically what they are is like an aptitude test to determine kind of what schools you're gonna get admitted to. Like if you have a high SAT score, you can go pretty much wherever you want, college-wise, or university, as you guys would say. Speed 110, get some more trim going. There we go. Coming up on the thresholds. Bring it to idle. And don't die. Didn't spin it. Much better than the last time I landed this thing. Still got a taxi though, so spare me the accolades just yet. There's some B-17s over here we're gonna go park next to because those are cool. Welcome back to the UK. I, le I left here. We could fly over to France, but I'm with my gas looking. Not much. It is pretty, at least as far as DCS has, has modeled it. I'm not sure how accurate this is to real life, but Deutsch seemed to say that it looked pretty good. Green rolling hills and stuff like that. Probably get enough fuel just to make it to Dunkirk. Yeah, this is a pretty, it's one of their, their better maps, I think. I mean, at least in terms of visual fidelity. Looks good, the buildings look good, the water, the coastal areas look pretty good. I'm excited to see um, how the clouds work I mean, they're going to look good. It's going to look kind of like FS2020, but I'm just afraid they're going to destroy my system because I have kind of a shitty computer. We will see in about a week. They're coming out on the 7th, guys, which I think is what? Is that next Tuesday? Look at these beauties. Guys, we're live. We did it. Let's kill that guy. Let's do a live check here real quick. Grounding wire's good. Hold the brakes. Let's go to 1200 and... We did it. Is Walker here still? They are. They are, yeah. In fact, um, Storm, the guy that runs it, he's really active on Instagram. He, I mean, he kind of makes me want to get back into that kind of flying because he has a lot of good pictures that he posts on Instagram all the time. It's worth a follow. Watt 100, Walker Air. Um, I have to look it up. I can't remember precisely what his screen name is on Instagram, but good follow. Good guy, too. Super nice. I actually kind of miss doing some of the tube stuff. Um, I know that there was a mod for what is it, FS2020, the the citation that they have in there. There's one that adds a lot of, I guess, real functionality to it. So I might actually fire that at some point and see how that is. If it's any good, I might stream it. The thing I just, I wish they had more complete instrument procedures because that's the main reason that I want to fly that type of stuff. 
I don't either. And in fact, I think that they put you if you don't if you're not active for a certain time frame, they'll actually put you kind of like in in purgatory. You'd have to message them to be reinstated, which is what I would have to do. But I'm just interested in getting back into that and doing some approaches and stuff in that nice, nasty FS2020 weather. Anyway, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Wish me luck. First day of school tomorrow. Lulu, always a pleasure. Good to see you again. They do. Yeah, they're on They're on pretty much every major civilian flight simulator. Anything that you want. And he's got liveries for literally every single plane. That dude, Storm just cranks him out. I'm teaching tomorrow, man. I'm first student tomorrow. I just passed my flight instructor last week, so... Fingers crossed that everybody comes back in one piece. Just left school. Get back there. Or come to the States and uh, take some school with me. It's the fun kind. You ain't got to do maths. Oh, you don't. You like maths. You don't have to do English. Just fly airplanes, man. All right, y'all. Nicholas, it's a good It's good to see you, dude. Been a long time. Um, glad to hear you're doing well. Hope your, your investment banking works out because uh, it's going to make you a millionaire, dude. <laughs> Have a good one. Lulu, always a pleasure. Guys, thanks for hanging out. We love you. We'll see you next time. Peace. Oh, wait, wait. One thing. One thing. I'm waiting. Wait for it. Wait. He's typing. He's typing. Typing furiously. If you become a millionaire, buy a plane and I'll fly it. I'm, I'll be a Part 91 corporate pilot. Work on it. <laughs> All right, man. Guys, we'll see you. Y'all, peace. Take it easy. Lulu, good luck in school. One day, definitely. You got a positive attitude, high IQ, good at maths. No reason not to. All right, bye for the third time. See ya.